We're going to look at Psalm 100 today, and again, I'm going to do something a little bit different. We're going to have some audience participation. I won't call on you. It's volunteer, but hopefully you will share because this is something you can share, um, readily share, hopefully. Uh, if you were watching a football game yesterday, how many of you stayed up for the Penn State game to the end? Oh, just one person. No, wow. No, we did two. Oh, two. We didn't make it that long. Um, I'm sure that there was some shouting and uh, some yelling at the screen, right? In Psalm 100, we kind of have God's words to the psalmist here for giving thanks, but it's a fourfold list of things to do. You like checklists? Yes. I live by a checklist. Um, and so I, I like to have those things checked off in neat little, you know, they're not boxes, but I can check off what I've done throughout a day. And it makes it easier for me to keep track of what I didn't get done so I can continue it through to the next day or the next time I have time. So in this checklist that God gives, the first thing that he says is, shout how? For joy. For joy. And who do we shout to? All the earth. Not to the football team that's winning. He didn't say shout to the TV screen, shout to your spouse. He didn't say that. He said shout to the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. Shout to the Lord. All the earth. Um, and so what he wants us to do is every person that God has created, he wants us to shout to him, doesn't he? He wants us to shout for joy at the, the works of his hand and to see what he has done. So what are some of the things that you can shout for joy to God to this morning? Overjoyed. I'm overjoyed that he's working in my son's life. Okay. I see evidence of that, and I am just praising him because God is moving. Okay. Just the peace he gives me day to day. Every need supplied. <coughs> Nobody else on the side shouting for joy. It's true. A, rough, a, a rough week. There's so many things we we want to have time to. Say one. Um, give him praise. I give him praise because we got a check in the mail that we weren't even expecting. That was a blessing. That was mm -hmm. truly from God, and it was a miracle. Um, and it and He provides for us through everything that we're going through. These opening up doors, people are people are coming to us with right before we need it. it it's just the answer is there. We just have to keep trusting. Mm -hmm. we, so he knows the need before he knows. you even know the need. Yes. And that song he knows, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. been my thing this week. Mm -hmm. He knows. Anyone else have joy you want to shout about? His love. His love. I want to add one more to that. The fact that I can serve a risen Savior and He's in this world today. Amen. Amen. Nothing wrong with mixing Easter with Thanksgiving and Christmas, right? right? It all works. It all works. I'm thankful for His faithfulness. Salvation. His promise. He says... In some translations, worship the Lord with gladness, but the word worship there is translated serve. That's different, isn't it? Serve. Serve the Lord how? With gladness. So when he says serve the Lord with gladness, does he mean to go in and say, oh man, I got to do that job again? Oh. 
And so we, you know, wonder about even our in place of employment. This is awful. I don't like it. I don't want to have to be here. He said, serve the Lord with gladness. Gladness is like joy. How about that? Shout for joy. Serve the Lord with joy. So what do you think should be in our hearts and in our lives? Joy. It's something that's continuous. Why? Not because of what we've done, but because of what he did on the cross for us. It's his salvation. And in Matthew chapter 25, verses 30, 35 and 36 and then 40, Jesus says, When I was hungry, you fed me. This is serving. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you took me in. When I needed clothes, you you just left me out in the cold? No, you clothed me. When I was sick, you visited me. When I was in, or you cared for me. When I, when I, uh, I was in prison, you, you came to see me. You didn't just leave me there. And the, they, the, the Pharisees didn't get this. Why is he telling us this? What does this have to do with serving? And so they asked him that question. When, Lord, did we do these things? And what did Jesus say? When you did the clothing, feeding the hungry, giving water to the thirsty, um, caring for the sick, taking in the stranger, visiting in prison. When you did these things, who did we do it to? Not ourselves. Who did we do it to? The least of these. You did it also to me, he said. When you've done all of these things, this is how you've served me joyfully, with joy. You see, it's not about all the kind of fancy stuff that we try to do sometimes, is it? It's about the small stuff that Jesus said. It's about the things of the heart that are driven here. And so when the psalmist says, serve the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs, how do we do that when we're serving people in these capacities? What happens? What happens to us? We're blessed. I don't know about you, but I'll tell you, when you spend time with people who have less than you, when you and you think you're poor, and you see someone who has even less than you, it makes you go, wow, it's not so bad in my court. You know, when I spent six weeks in Haiti, I, re I came home a changed person at 20 years old. God did something in my heart, and I've never forgotten what it was like. You know, when I was growing up, I didn't have to use an outhouse. We had an inside toilet in our house. Every place we lived, we were blessed. Six weeks in Haiti, I used the outside house. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't always pleasant at, in the middle of the night. And I never saw little gecko things because I didn't live in Florida before I went there. And when I saw those on the door, I was afraid to go in at first. I thought, oh my, if they're on the door outside, they're going to be all over in this thing. They weren't. And they told me the benefit of those, that they actually ate those small little bugs. And so there's a benefit of every creation that God has, has created. But I, I counted myself blessed beyond measure when I spent time with people who had even less than I did. And we, when we do that, someone who is more sick than you, you think you're sick and you find someone else who has something worse than you have, what do you feel like? Oh, well, what I have isn't so bad. Why? Because he gives us the strength and the grace to go through those things, doesn't he? And that's where our joy comes in 
in serving him in these places because we can count ourselves blessed from having done these things to the least of them. And so the next time you see someone who's in need, you know, this morning I shouted for joy because someone else served and swept off the snow before I even came out. Even my own porch was swept. <laughs> Imagine coming out, opening the door, I'm ready to sweep snow. And it's done and I was like, wow. I shouted for joy because someone in the church served and served their pastor too. It gave me joy. But more than that, it gave God joy, didn't it? And I thank Jim for doing that. I already thanked him for coming up and taking care of things. He said, it's my job, isn't it? And I said, well, maybe. But it's also a place to serve Jesus, isn't it? So we, we can see it as either a job to do or a way to serve. And serving others is what the psalmist wants us to see, is that serving others is our worship to God. Okay, I think we're going to lose our power this morning. Um, so, the next one is, know that the Lord is God. Do you know He's God? And how do we know that He is God? Well, the psalmist tells us, it is He who made us. We can't self-create. God made us. It's He made us who we are. And so that's how we know that God is God. He spoke this earth into creation, didn't He? The whole universe. He spoke it into creation. That's how we know He is God. That's powerful when you stop to think about it, isn't it? Think about all the ways that you know God is God. We just came through a whole season of leaves changing. None of us went up there and shot little stuff in, you know, uh, what do they call it, the, the dye into those leaves to make them change, did, did we? Did any of you do that? Spend your time, you know, going around all the trees, <laughs> making sure their leaves were changing color? No. That's the hand of God that did that. That's His creation that does that. And so we know that He is God because when we look around us and we see creation and we see all that He has done, we know we couldn't have done that in and of ourselves. And it has to be God, right? Yeah. It's not some little genie running around doing His work. It's God Himself. And in this translation it, here, the, the word for God is Elohim. He who spoke the world, the existence, the universe into existence. That's the God that we serve. We're the, His people, the sheep of His pasture. Even the words, the very words that He's given us, we get to feed on that. That's how much God loves and cares for us, isn't it? To give us His Word for food. Some of us like to eat, right? How many of you are going to eat after the church service? Probably all of you. And so when we eat, when we, when we have this food to eat, we eat physical food, but He wants us to have our spiritual food too, and He looked out for us in that. He said, I want you to have this food so that you won't be hungry, spiritually hungry. You can just keep feeding and keep feeding. Isn't that beautiful? And then he says, the last one is, enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. We should always have something on our lips that we can thank him for. We enter his gates, enter his, his sanctuary, enter his heavens, enter his presence 
That's the me how that those are translated. Enter his presence with praise, with thanksgiving, and give thanks to who? Him. Give praise his and praise his great name. This morning, as we are preparing to take communion, I thought it would be good for us to just verbalize each of us before we partake to say what we're thankful for. And so I want you to take just a couple of minutes and think about what it is that you are thankful for. What has God done for you that you are thankful for? I know we're thankful for what communion represents and we're going to give thanks for that. But outside of that, what are you thankful for? What, are you, what do you look to God and you say, you know, without you, this would never have taken place in my life. Or without your provision. Peggy sang this morning, he's all I need. He's, he is, he's all we need. Thank him today, specifically. You know, it's, it's one thing to just say something about thank you for serving. It's another for saying thank you for shoveling the snow or sweeping the snow. It wasn't enough to shovel today. But thank you for specifically for sweeping the snow today. Thank you for spreading the salt and the ice melt today so that others could come in without stepping on ice. You see, when we're specific about that thanks, God knows even the smallest thing that he's done for us is meaningful to us. And I think it helps us to corporately when we share those things. We're, we're sharing in praise and adoration of what God's done for us. And so we give him thanks, right? And we need to hear one another, give him thanks for what he's done for us because he's done a marvelous work among us, hasn't he? Would you agree with that? Amen. He's done great things and mighty things. And so I want you to just take a couple of minutes to think about something that you can give him thanks for today. Jesus, we thank you for coming to this earth on our behalf as our Savior. And as we enter this time of giving thanks for your body and your blood that was given for us, for our salvation. We also want to remember what you do on a daily basis for us and give you thanks for that. We want to be grateful people. Grateful for everything that you give us things that you meet, ways that you meet our needs, spiritually, physically, financially, and emotionally. And so as we think about the ways that we can give you thanks today, specifically, and press those words on our hearts so that all of us can come and shout for joy at what you have done and give you praise. Amen.